Welcome. I'm Diane Meyerhoff, host for Town Meeting TV's South Burlington City Council Candidate Forum, part of our ongoing Town Meeting 2021 coverage. This show is being aired live on Town Meeting TV and streamed live on our YouTube channel. We welcome your comments and questions. If you're watching this program live, please join the conversation at 862-3966. I'm joined by Councillor Helen Reilly, the incumbent. Thank you so much for joining us, Helen. Uh, and Helen is running unopposed, so we're going to have a more casual discussion for at least for <laughs> 15 minutes anyhow. Um, so uh, tell me a little bit about what's going on in South Burlington around development, open space. There's been some conflict in there about that. Uh, what, what's, what, what, what does that mean for you? Well, we're working, we're almost to the end of IZ or interim zoning, and that was put in place almost two years ago to get a handle on, I think, um, and maybe try to even base on base some of our decisions on science, <laughs> how amazing that would be, huh? Um, <laughs> about the importance of some of the fragile um, open space areas, particularly in the Southeast Quadrant, and feeling the pressure um, to develop and create more housing, and to understand that so we can make some um, potentially uh, changes to the land um, development regulations, the LDRs, and the Planning Commission is doing that. We had a couple studies. We had a group doing um, open space, and we have a housing committee, and we have a housing trust fund, so um, affordable housing is a, a big issue in South Burlington. Um, but it, it unfortunately turned into kind of, well, there's a group that want to you know, build anywhere and everywhere and do not want any um, extra parameters about or rules and regulations for development. And then there's an equally loud group, I guess, um, who feel that in part because of climate change and um, in our environment that we need to really stop development in the, what we call the Southeast Quadrant, um, where most of the open space is. So I think um, we have their report and the Planning Commission is doing a good job with developing um, regulations. And I think the conflict, um, maybe it's just a chasm of differences of opinion, but I think one of the important issues for the council going forward is really to bridge that chasm. And we really need to find common ground. It shouldn't tear us apart. We should not be like, the US Congress where you know you got this group and that group and we're never gonna say yes to anything you want. I think um, the vast majority of people really think that yes, there will be some development in the Southeast quadrant, but there also should be based on some of the good science um, areas that are um, set apart and not allowed to be built on, um, built upon. Uh, and I think that links to sort of the the climate uh, change issue, because some of those vulnerable areas are the very things that um, research tells us will prevent um, some of the um, weather events that are extreme um, from really destroying property and um, parts of the city. And they, you know, we're up a little higher from Lake Champlain and all that water, if it's filled with stuff going into Lake Champlain, where we all, you know, we drink that. We, it's a natural resource that's worth protecting. So those kinds of that interplay with development and reasonable conservation, I think, um, can and will come together. So we're sort of, yeah, go ahead. Are the are the those vulnerable places you spoke about? Um, are those at this point municipally owned, privately owned, a mixture? Um, it's a mixture. Kind of the, yeah, it's a mixture. Some, and, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Some are owned by the University of Vermont. So they certainly are partners that we need to um, have this conversation about. Um, some of the science comes from <clears throat> their very own uh, professors. <laughs> um, and then uh, much is privately owned. And then there's other parts that the city has conserved. Um, and so they're, you know, off limits for a development. So it's that conversation about, you know, I mean, there's already regulations like wetlands. If 
you know, you can't build a house in the middle of those. And um, so some of those um, natural resource um, issues <clears throat> are being looked at by the planning commission and, and um, you know, modified to really make sure that some of the land is really protected. And, and that's what we are waiting to see, so. Mm -hmm. And are, is much of the pressure on those vulnerable lands or on the quadrant in general, is it most of it for housing? And is that because the city's made a commitment to look for more mixed use kind of housing and affordable housing and such? Uh, is that kind of what you're seeing? Well, I think that's what a lot of people feel, that that's the place, the easiest place to um, build. Yeah. Um, there's other groups, uh, myself included, that, um, you know, I think there will be <clears throat> development and housing, mostly housing in the Southeast Quadrant. But I also think we have set in place, <clears throat> particularly with um, the city center, places where denser housing makes sense, close to services, close to transportation, close to jobs. I mean, one of our other goals with, as well as having um, housing for all levels of um, society, it's also to be walkable and, and rideable city. And that doesn't mean building way out at the end of Hinesburg Road and trying to walk or bike along that to get to school or work or someplace else. And uh, it's interesting, you talked about sort of the building <coughs> way out. What's the situation with the mall right now? What's going on there? Um, I well, remember so hearing um, and I haven't really heard much lately. Yeah. So tell us about that. Well, that, that's another really interesting um, potential collaboration. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Diane's cat just walked across the screen. So that's why we're laughing. Um, no, that's a potential partner. Uh, and we would like to have that, um, I think it's 66 acres, become part of city center and work with them to really revitalize it, make it both a business sector, a viable business sector, as well as um, housing, more housing, and even some things that would draw people in, you know, maybe an ice skating rink or, um, you know, cinema or, you know, those kinds of things that, and then related to that is a bridge over the interstate. So, mm -hmm all the college students can safely walk or ride across the bridge to get to South Burlington and South Burlington can go across the bridge and safely get into Burlington, in downtown Burlington. That would be so, quite nice. Yes, so that's, that's an area for um, you know collaboration and working with them. And, and so we have had conversations and I think they, um, they didn't shut the door they are amenable to seeing what we can work out together. Because certainly if it's a TIF, then you can use the TIF funds to build some of the infrastructure that may not be there that they would need to. Okay, so so they, they could actually become part of the existing TIF district or would yes. this be another one? We, we would have to apply and have to yeah. get permission from the state. But yes, VEPSI I think is the board that makes that decision, yeah. Okay. Well, you can certainly see, uh, you know, an area that is already disturbed, if you will, right? Sort of yeah, yeah. Such that that is a that is seems to be a place where you would think, oh, this is a great spot for us to do some of that. Oh, development. sure, yeah. yeah. And that's where you could really have some density. It would make mm -hmm. sense. Yeah. Um, I think there's other opportunities. You know, the Hannafords that uh, they built recently, and then then redid the um, new Hannafords at you know what used to be Kmart. Um, yeah. That's a building that doesn't have a use right now. Yep. We should be working with Hannaford's to say, how can we help right. redevelop that? What, what would be creative going in there? Right. So right. I think there's a, there's a number of areas throughout the state, throughout the, state, throughout the city, um, yeah. the transect zones um, where you have a lot of roads that come in, you have public transportation, um, and it's close to schools and so forth. Those are other areas for, I think, housing development as well as business development. I don't think we should only look at the Southeast Quadrant. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And we don't need to. Yeah. Um, let's talk a little bit about the F-35s in the airport. Oh, yeah. Well. <laughs> and, and tell me um, what your feeling is about 
um, adding Winooski to the airport, the Burlington Airport Commission. Please. Yeah. Well, I am South Burlington's um, commissioner. Uh -huh. I represent, so I'm on the airport board. You're <clears throat> in. You're on the in here. I am on the inside there, and I <laughs> definitely think Winooski deserves a seat. Um, I, Bur South Burlington and Winooski are the two cities <clears throat> that are most um, affected by the F-35s. Mm -hmm. And everyone I've spoken to says, well, you know, they are louder than the F-16s. Even though we were told they wouldn't be, mm. they really are. Um, so they, they are definitely something to be reckoned with. Um, and we're working through with the FAA and the airport commission and the city of Burlington to, um, and we're getting close to having um, dollars to really start the sound mitigation um, program in Winooski and South Burlington. In fact, the money, I think the grant has been made and we should be able to go forward with testing 10 homes, it's starting small, to um, figure out what are the different um, programs that that would work and is it windows is it doors you know insulation or is it they ought to sell <laughs> so wow. and is that is that have you done some of that work in other buildings near the airport is that have you already done some of that as no no not not as an uh, FAA program related to ah. the F35s oh. or the F16s well, the that's program in the past was one of um tear them down because they're uninhabitable. Okay. Okay. Um, we recently signed an MOU with um, between um, Winooski, Burlington and South Burlington that makes it clear that none of us believe that is the preferred method. And okay. we really okay. want to get down this path of um, noise mitigation and seeing if we can make um, some of the homes more livable. And mm -hmm. South Burlington's um, elementary school, Champlain, uh, no, Chamberlain, I'm sorry. Chamberlain. Right. I lived in Burlington for a while. So. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, they have just gotten a grant to um, that the FAA is, is installing a new HVAC system for the, for the whole building to okay. help um, reduce the, the noise ah, for, the, okay. for the children. So interesting. Oh, so, you know, I think we're moving along. Do I yeah. get complaints? Yeah, I get some. And there are certainly people in both Winooski and South Burlington who still feel very, very, very strongly that they should never have been based here. And I didn't think they should be based here either, but I lost that battle. So yeah. now I think we have to make the best of it and see what we can do to um, make the homes more um, livable. And are, are people in general who live that close or are particularly affected by the noise, um, are they game to give this a try? Are most people interested in, in trying to find ways to mitigate the noise? Well, I, I, think, I think many are. I think that's part of the process and the rollout is to really meet with every homeowner and analyze their home and find out if it's even um, doable. If it can't reduce the noise to 45 decibels, then it's not worth doing, uh, okay. you know, according to the FAA anyway. Um, yeah. So there's that piece of it. There may be people who don't want anything done to their house, but I don't, I would be surprised if someone came in and said, you know, I'm gonna put new windows and doors and insulation in your home. And we're working with um, Vermont gas systems and uh, thinking about some, at the same time, some efficiencies, um, mm -hmm. that, that's quite a package of um, goodies. It still doesn't, might not make them support the FAAs, <laughs> uh, the F-35s rather. Right, right, right. Yeah, I, mean, I guess- To the make their who, house better. <laughs> the people who, who really couldn't tolerate it have probably left by now. Is that fair to say? Or have moved on, have, have sold the house or- uh, yeah, possibly. I, th I think so. I think some yeah. people also wanted their kids to finish out school right. or they There's wanted many to, yeah. you know, wait till they retired or. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Interesting. Well, okay. We'll see how the vote goes in, uh, in Burlington for the, uh, for the Winooski seat. It'll be interesting to see right. how that, yeah. what happens with that. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, so we are just about out of time. Do you want to um, appeal to the voters for any of the ballot items or anything you'd like to sort of sum up before we oh. before we get one another? Well, I hope they vote yes on everything. Um, well, I hope easy. they I hope they vote for me. Um, okay. You know, I'd like them to vote for Dave Kaufman for the other city council person. Um, but you know, I particularly want them to pass the budgets and the the TIF um, ballot item is is really important to the city and its future um, economic viability. So I certainly want that passed and I would love to see the school budget passed um, so that we can move on and, and figure out next steps after COVID and yeah. all that kind of oh, hard feelings and disconnect with, do we need a new high school or not? And, yeah, that, that was that was a tough vote. So I'd like us to start moving forward. Great. Well, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Welcome. My pleasure. And we have to tell everyone not to not forget to vote uh, via early That's ballot, right. which at this point, I don't know if they still can be mailed in South Burlington. Do you have drop boxes? We have drop boxes at City Hall. So um, and a lot have come in and, um, and people yeah, may want I hope everyone votes and and does it thoughtfully. So yes, and you can do it in forget. person still on Tuesday, March 2nd on Town Meeting yes. Day. Yes. And importantly, I hope everyone will watch our Town Meeting TV's live results right. show on Tuesday night starting at seven o'clock. Okay. Well, I thank you for doing this. So it's really important Good. to educate the public and have them part of the solution. Yes, thanks so much. Good, we thank will see you. everyone soon. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you. Good night.